I've had lots of science. This is me just thinking, really. I've got lots of disclosures, and I've made lots of money out of Jupitrons, so uh, that's the truth of the matter. But here's the problem. We all like evidence-based medicine. But we know now, since Zeopex has been introduced, that some healthcare systems won't allow Zeopex unless there's a randomized trial comparing it with this, that, or something else. And that's inhibited the uptake across many countries in Europe, as we know from our FESH uh, studies. So here's my hypothesis for this talk. I believe that a valid, generalizable, unbiased, randomized trial cannot be designed to compare collagenase with either PNF fasciectomy, or even skin grafting. And these are my reasons, and we'll go through these. First of all, heterogeneity of the disease. <laughs> That's a, a Dutch woman and an English man up there. <laughs> now, some cords are more suitable for collagenase than needle fasciotomy. A tiny, skinny little cord, of course you just stick a needle in it. But as the cord gets broader and broader, it's not suitable for a needle, but you can use collagenase. And as the skin gets more and more involved, it's not suitable for a collagenase or a needle. You start to think about surgery, perhaps even a skin graft. So clearly, no one's going to waste money using collagenase on a tiny, skinny cord. But equally, if you use collagenase on multiple, multiple digits, we've heard about two digits now, but a patient with four, five, six, seven different parts of their hand to fix. Why waste money on lots and lots of collagenase injections? Why keep coming back for your manipulation, back for therapy, another injection, back for another, another injection, have one operation and get it fixed? And so it's obvious really, isn't it? We're comparing twigs, which perhaps might be suitable for needle fasciotomy, with logs that might be suitable for perhaps collagenase or even surgery. We've got lots of different ways they might all have two wheels, but there's different bikes for different purposes, different treatments for different purposes. They're all off the Honda website. So we can never have a study that's generalizable because of heterogeneity. So you can design whatever study you want, but it will never actually match the patient you've got in front of you. Equipoise. Now you know that a study can only be undertaken ethically if both the clinician and the patient have equipoise for both treatments. If you haven't got equipoise, you have not got an ethical study. And this introduces bias. Now, in our patients, four out of five patients requesting Zepex would never have agreed to surgery. So recruitment for any sort of study will be highly hampered by patient bias. And all of you that use Zepex will know people look you up on the internet, they travel a long way, they come and find you. Uh, our treatment rates for Jupitrons have rocketed, and that's because we're offering Zeopex, not because people come for surgery. And similarly, surgeons, we're all biased, and every single surgeon in this room will have a different view about the right treatment for the right cord. So we're just as biased as well. What about outcome measures? We don't know the most appropriate outcome measure for Jupitrons. There's the quick dash. Well, we've looked at that. It doesn't work that well. It's not particularly sensitive. That's the Southampton score in the middle for what it's worth. There's the URAMS, which, by the way, is in French. Uh, shouldn't really be used in English unless it's been validated as so. It's a French scheme. So we don't really know what questionnaire to use. What we do know is that if you use a questionnaire for outcome in Jupitrons, it does not relate particularly well to patient satisfaction. It doesn't relate particularly well to the degree of deformity either. What about expense? Now, expense is a crucial thing to calculate uh, when we look at Jupitrons. Mm -hmm. But here's something. There's a societal cost to rapid return to work. Now, some healthcare systems, for example, when the British NICE looked at this, didn't look at the cost. If you get a patient back to work within four days and they go back paying tax, that tax that they pay will pay for buckets of Zepex. It will certainly pay for lots of, uh, lots of your needles for needle fasciotomy. Whereas if you stick someone off work for six weeks with an operation... That's actually very expensive societal cost, particularly for the self-employed who want to get back to work. Now, when have you ever seen a study that properly accounts for that as a proper outcome measure? And it is. How about complications? You're probably all aware of this sort of complication matrix where 
you can have a complication that's terribly rare, top right, like Gary's anaphylactic shock we heard about, but it's extremely serious when it happens. Okay, whereas if you get a bit of a skin split, all of which heal within 10 days, if you have an operation, you've still got your dressings on, your split, which is a very big surgical split, by the way, hasn't healed by 10 days. So how do you compare these complications? Who's to say that an injured nerve doing an operation is better or worse as a complication than a painful blood blister with Zeopex? So you can't compare complications as a primary or secondary outcome. What about recurrence? Now, we've heard about recurrence already, and we'll hear tomorrow from Joe about recurrence as well, so I won't bang on about recurrence. But here's something. Recurrence after different treatments has a different value. If you have a recurrence after needle fasciotomy, as Paul will tell us, it's dead easy just to stick another needle in. Same actually for Zeopex. Comes back, well, so what? You have another uh, injection, or if you want an operation, it's quite an easy operation. If you have recurrence after surgery, even though the recurrence rate after surgery is lower, well, that's a difficult operation. It's hazardous, it takes time, the nerves are at risk, recurrence, recovery is later. So recurrence isn't really an outcome either. Funding, who's going to pay for this? I'll tell you what, I don't think Sobe will pay for this sort of study. Just supposing the study showed that needle fasciotomy is as good as Zeopex, well, they're not going to take that commercial risk. And I'm not sure, actually, that state funding or charity funding would look at this either because... At the end of the day, there's so many biases amongst the patient and, sur patient and surgeon, and there's so many different types of twigs and logs, apples and oranges, that actually people probably aren't put much money into this sort of non-generalizable study because the value won't be particularly there for the patient in front of you. Blinding. We all know that a proper randomized study should be blinded. Well, you can't blind this sort of thing. It's pretty obvious if you're injecting a drug or sticking a needle in or having an operation. So there's no blinding here. And here's my last slide. What about duration of follow-up? Now, you could say that recurrence is quite important, and we know that people criticise needle fasciotomy because it recurs a lot. Collagenase re clearly recurs quite a bit, not quite as much as needles probably. Surgery probably recurs a little bit less. Well, OK, if that's an outcome measure... You need a five-year study, another two years to write it up. That's seven years. Well, Auxilium, Sobe, Endo, whoever, they'll be bankrupt if they wait seven years before we start using this stuff, before we get the next study. Uh, you can't wait for that long. Patients won't. They, they're demanding this, and we're pretty happy. So it's my opinion, at least, that I don't think you're going to design a proper randomized study, on average, to look at the average cord and what's the best treatment. And I think we already know more or less enough how to choose what you'll treat for what particular patient and in what particular situation. And I think we can have to deduce from what we've got already and perhaps not be looking too hard to find, fund what will probably be a useless randomized trial. Uh, Paul showed you the book. Make sure you send those forms off. If, you're not coming, if you come to FESH, you get the hard copy book. If you're not coming to FESH, send off that leaflet in your bag and we'll email you a digital one for your iPad. Thank you.